What can we expect from Dustin Wolf and the rest of the Flames this season as we look back on the career of Chris Simon? Hey, everyone. Welcome into Burning Questions. Rob Wong joined alongside by Post Media Calgary Flames writers Wes Gilbertson and Danny Austin. Guys, the Flames are still mathematically in the playoff race, but time, of course, running out with just 14 games remaining on the schedule. And because of that, I think a lot of fans and media are keeping an eye on sp- some specific players and how they might project moving forward. One guy definitely top of mind right now is Dustin Wolf, who has started the last three games. And Wes, a couple of good ones, followed by a not-so-good one against Washington. But when you look at his game right now, what stands out and how do you think he fits in this puzzle moving forward? Yeah, the excitement about Dustin Wolf, uh, you know, the reigning AHL MVP, the goaltender of the future here in Calgary, that excitement didn't, uh, I don't think, get tamped down at all by what we saw in the the past week, a couple of great outings, as you said, against the Vegas Golden Knights and then the Montreal Canadiens. And I thought, you know, head coach Ryan Huska probably put it very fairly when he said that Dustin was just okay against the Washington Capitals. But He's a guy that I'd like to see some more of down the stretch. We know Jacob Markstrom is close to returning to the crease from his lower body injury, but you know, with the situation the the Flames are in right now, I, I just don't see a a ton of sense in not giving Dustin Wolf at least a handful more starts down the stretch. He's a huge part of your future, and he'll tell you himself like every single game at the NHL level really is a learning opportunity, whether that's you know, finding out firsthand how hard it is to stop Alex Ovechkin on the power play, whether that's dealing with the bigger bodies and the traffic in front, you know, whatever that is. I do think that he really benefits from the reps, as he calls them, at the NHL level. And if he could get some more of those down the stretch, understanding that Jacob Markstrom's going to need some starts too, I think it would be good for the, the long-term future of both the goalie and the organization. Yeah, and I mean, I think if you went back, probably to our first burning questions video in the fall we probably were talking a little bit about dustin wolf i didn't actually check that but i can tell you west and i definitely wrote about it during training camp and throughout the fall this is a guy there is rightfully so much excitement i mean he's been the best goalie in the league at pretty much every single level he's played at and that should not be the expectation on day one um for him with the flames at the nhl level it's going to take him a while to get going and there's nothing wrong with that um but it's going to be one of the things there are going to be a lot of difficult nights going forward for the Flame Business Organization for the next little while as they bring these young guys in. But then there's also going to be those exciting nights that make you kind of dream big of a little bit of what a guy like Dustin Wolf could do backstopping this team. And um, yeah, I, I, I think that we're, we're going to get a preview of that. And it's already been fun. And it's already, there have been ups and downs. But that's what you expect. That's what you get, whether you want to call it a rebuild or a retool or a re-whatever you want. Um, the fun part is these young guys, we actually get to see them instead of just talk about them. Yeah, And let me just add on to the end of that, because it's a great point. I think there's a, a real case to be made for, we understand there's going to be growing pains for Dustin Wolf, just like, you know, there are for Connor Zary and Martin Pospisil and, and whoever else comes up from the minors throughout the season. There's a real case to be made for getting some of those growing pains kind of out of the way now, mm-hmm. you know, when this team has stopped talking about the playoff race I think they're resigned to the fact and when I say this team I mean the guys in the locker room I I think they know how this season's ending you know if you can get Dustin Wolf a little more experience that benefits you next season and beyond I think this is the time of year to do it well going back into the archives uh, Danny was right we talked about Dustin Wolf back in uh, December so good memory there Danny Mm -hmm. Uh, meanwhile some sad news from the hockey world this week former Calgary Flame Chris Simon passing away at the age of 52 he played 782 games in the NHL and 85 of those with the Flames Danny this guy was one of the more memorable tough guy slash enforcers in Flames history yeah I mean his stint here was very short but extremely memorable I mean he was acquired uh, I believe right at the trade deadline in 2004 and was an important piece in that sort of magical cup run that you know I'm, I'm not from here but if there's one thing I've learned it's that people in Calgary love talking about the 04 cup run and they love talking about the 88 Olympics it's all sort of what age and Chris Simon is was it was a big piece of that and he brought that grit but I will say I mean he was a lot more than just a tough guy this guy if you go back and look at his stats he had some real real offensive talent and, and it was a big contributor it's why he stuck around the NHL I believe it was for at least 15 seasons um don't have my article that I wrote yesterday, but I did verify that. Um, and, you know, he you know, he retired before I was done undergrad, so I, I never had the pleasure of, of covering him. But I, I think we've seen from his teammates, both in Calgary and, and around the NHL, uh, that while he had that sort of tough guy 
um, tough guy reputation on the ice. He was, he was really, really loved by his teammates and, and, and that wasn't necessarily, you know, who he was off the ice. And yeah, it's just been a very sad day. And, and I do think that you've seen around Calgary, just, you know, the hockey community, you know, rightfully mourning uh, a guy that, that was pretty loved here given the amount of time he spent. Up. Yeah. You know, one of the things the flames put in the, the statement that the team uh, released, and I just thought, you know, this three word segment kind of nailed it in so many ways. They described him as an instant fan favorite in Calgary. And that couldn't have been more true. He arrived in, in March of 04. That team goes on its fairy tale run to game seven of the Stanley cup final. He, you know, he was a big part of the identity, you know, of that team, the sort of swagger and, and attitude the the sort of, I guess, in, enduring image all have of Chris Simon is, is scoring a big goal in the playoffs and then, you know, jumping into the glass. I think the glass might still be reverberating <laughs> actually, because he was such a big man and, and that was such a ferocious jump. But, you know, I'm sure if you talk to his teammates from 2004 and from other stops on, you know, his NHL career, he was very popular, uh, kind of a, a teddy bear of a guy and uh, certainly a loss for the hockey world. Uh, very well said. As always, leave your thoughts in the comments section below or send us an email at calgaryflames at postmedia.com. For Wes Gilbertson and Danny Austin, I'm Rob Wong. Thanks for watching, and we'll talk to you next time.